Hey everyone, welcome back to the We're Looking at Polestar. Compelling growth story with major risk. Polestar revenue has grown at CAGR of 85% of strong products development, battery innovation, and benefits from its relationship with Volvo and Geely has allowed it to gain market. We expect strong growth to continue as the company increased scale, launched new vehicles, and expanded its geographical and national footprint. In near terms, however, economical conditions are still weighing. Polestar's biggest issue is margins, which has shown little signs of improvements. Further, the company currently has a FCF margin of 52%, a highly concerning level. Post our valuation and momentum do not inspire confidence in its share price performance in the coming quarter, so we are cautious. So I found this article by Seek and Alpha. I find it to be quite interesting. So the first thing that they mentioned is the is the post star revenue, the compound annual growth rate of 85%. That's a strong product development, and it's true. Post star has been looking to deliver more vehicles this year. And to be honest, initially they were looking to deliver 80,000, 80, perhaps even 75,000, but now it's 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 fallen to around 60,000. Keep in mind that last year they delivered 52,000. And towards the end of last year, that was a huge quarter for them. In fact, in terms of revenue, they brought in just under $1 billion, 985 million. So far this year, their growth has been rising consistently. If you compare the first quarter of last year compared with the first quarter of this year, you'll notice that last year was 452 million. This year, the first quarter was 546 million. The second quarter was once again impressive. Last year, it was 589 million. This year, it's 685 million. That's almost a $100 million in differences. And in terms of third quarter, last year was 435 million. This year was 613 million. And last year, the final quarter was just incredible as it accumulated almost a billion. So this year, we're looking at that quarter, the end of the end of this year quarter would certainly hit above a billion, maybe 1.1, maybe 1.2 billion, considering how much vehicles they're delivering. They're looking to deliver 8,000 more vehicles this year, towards the end of this year. So there'll be a significant difference. And you can see it has been rising. Although, to be honest, there's not a huge difference for this year and last year. And one of the reasons why we can't forget, Polestar has been super focused on bringing new vehicles to market. Right now, that's the most important thing to this company is bringing new vehicles to market. Polestar 3, Polestar 4. That will add three vehicles in total to, to our lineup. And then they can focus on the Polestar 5, which is the Sport GT sedan, and the Polestar 6, which is the Roadster. And those will make probably less money for the company, but they'll be a staple of the company, especially the Roadster. And for the next two years, their plan is basically to get cash flow break even. That's by 2025. I don't know if this will be accomplished at the start of 2025 or towards the end of 2025, but it looks like Polestar is gearing up to have a huge year next year. Polestar is basically sacrificed this year. That's what they've done. They've delayed the Polestar 3 release. Volvo has also delayed the EX90 release because they want to get it perfect. They need to know that these vehicles will have minimum recalls. I'd rather them delay the vehicles and have minimum recalls. I'd rather them focus on making the best vehicles possible. Volvo always sells great vehicles. They always sell reliable vehicles. They're known for that. And Polestar should be known for the same thing. I'm not concerned with, with, with the criticism that people are giving this company that they're not doing too well. Of course, they're not doing too well. They're a startup. They're just getting started. You have to give them a while. You've got to give them 10, 5, 10 years before you can expect anything impressive. Look at Tesla. Look how long it took Tesla to get up to speed. And I remember for a long time, 2012, 2013, 2014, people were all hating on Tesla, especially the media was constantly saying, when will this company fail? It's EV stock. It's a waste of time, wasting, wasting people money, wasting investors money. Investors are getting impatient. All sort of controversies. And look at what Tesla has accomplished since. Don't get me wrong. Polestar is not the next Tesla. They're not, but they are the next Porsche. That's the objective. 150,000 vehicles, 250,000 vehicles. That's the long-term objective. So what if Postar could break even just around 150,000 vehicles to 200,000 vehicles? That's break even. Now we're looking at profits. Anything above there, we're looking at profits. We're looking at margins, improving margins, minimizing losses, and profit. So considering that the revenue is growing, despite the fact that they're not having the best year, there's a huge applause that Postar deserve for the continual work. And I don't understand the criticism 
that it's open up for new investment. Of course it should be. That's that's the point of a growing company is that they need more investment to drive the innovation of this company, to drive the production of this company. The the investment that is gained from, from Volvo and Geely, those are in terms of, I believe, as loans. So people consider that as debt. But remember that this is debt that is that you owe to your parent company. It's better to owe your parent company than it is to own a bank. Owning a bank is just more complicated. You could lose so many assets if you don't pay that off. But owning your parent company, that's just good business. But now they're looking for even more international investment. And I think this is the ideal way to go. They need to get to... Um, to cash flow break even and then we can consider then we can talk about okay now the pressure is on to improve margins now the pressure is on to actually make profit something to consider is the market cap the market cap of this company is ridiculously cheap less than five billion but let's consider how much money they've been making in terms of just revenue this is not profit this is just revenue so i believe last year considering how much they made it was just under three billion compared to the market cap at 4.7 billion uh for psny Market cap, $4.67 billion. And they've made just under $3 billion last year. So this year, we're looking to make $2.5, maybe close to $4 billion. Next year, this company will be generating upwards of 4 to $5 billion. It will be worth more than the market cap. That's just in revenue. That's not profit. This is a good thing. Let's take a look at Apple's valuation. The market cap is $2.97 billion. Almost $3 billion in market cap, right? Let's look at the, the quarterly results. So for the last two years, these are the quarterly results. Q1, 97 billion. 82 billion in Q2. Q3, 90 billion. Q4, 117 billion. So across the entire year, they probably made uh, just under 400 billion. If you consider, If you consider that compared to their market cap, you could almost say that Apple is overvalued. Almost. There I say almost. For the last five years, Apple has come a long way, to be honest. But they've been growing revenue steadily and steadily. But compare that to the market cap. Compare that to the market cap. This is Apple's market cap growth. It has been growing with the company's revenue. But it's been growing a lot faster than the company's revenue. Towards the end of 2019, the company was valued just around $1.29 trillion. So if you compare that with the revenue, just around $91 billion. You compare that with the, with the revenue of last year, in the quarter last year, it's $117 billion. So the market cap has obviously been growing a lot faster than the valuation, than the actual revenue of this company. This is just revenue, by the way. This is not considering just profit. So in a way, you could say Apple is overvalued. If Polestar is undervalued, which it certainly is, you could say that Apple is overvalued. And to a certain extent, it kind of is. The real question for Apple is, the revenue will continue to grow. Will the shares just go absolutely crazy or will they start to slow down and taper off? But I just wanted to show you the, the absolute ridiculousness. If you consider what Apple can make in two years, they cannot make their market cap in two years. And that's in terms of revenue. But for Polestar, they could make their market cap in two years in terms of revenue. That's clearly an undervalued company. But that's just my opinion. It's not financial advice. But it's just something I notice. Polestar is pulling in just under $3 billion last year. In two years, they can easily produce, in terms of revenue, in two years, 6 to $8 billion. That's more than the market cap. Apple cannot do the same thing. Apple is overvalued. A lot of companies are overvalued, in, in fact. But it's the way the market is going and it really gets complicated for, for shareholders because they don't know when to buy. That's why they often give their money to investment professionals. But the concerning thing for a lot of investors is the margins on Polestar. The margins are small and I admit that is margins need to be improved. But I expect it will once they can break cash flow even. The company's current FCF margin of 52% is a highly concerning level as well. That's the free cash flow, free cash flow. Now, investors really love this. Investors really love when a company has great amount of cash flow just flowing in. And it's not just it's free cash flow as well. It's even better for investors because often this means that they can get money back into their pockets. Investors love this because investors like to be paid, not just that the value of the, their position in the company is rising, but they also like to be paid continuously. Free cash flow is a, is a great way to reassure investors that they're investing in your stocks for good reasons.
a few other things that this website has mentioned is that they expect revenue to grow strongly in the coming five years. So do I, because so much more vehicles are being launched by Polestar and by Volvo as well. They also say that Polestar has a great market offering underpinned by high quality design philosophy, battery technology, and its relationship with Volvo cars slash Geely. This has allowed the company to grow well, although it has slowed in recent quarters. We're concerned that the coming months will be more of a same, slowing the company's progression. It is a difficult year for Polestar. It will continue to be a difficult year, but with the introduction of the Polestar 3 next year and the Polestar 4, you're going to see a major shift in the perception of this, of this car company going to be a major shift and share prices will start turning around slowly but surely it won't stay this cheap forever and that's the thing that people are not expecting this company they think it's going to stay cheap forever it's not going to stay cheap forever sadly to say because they're releasing cars that are actually great people already love the Polestar 2 and they're coming out with more vehicles that are even more improved so great things are to come from this company this article has some great stuff, some great details in it. I haven't gone through everything, to be honest. Some of these things I've already been through on on previous videos, but you can check out this channel if you but you can check out this article if you'd like. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, and I'll see you in our next video. Peace.